Hey guys, thanks for joining us. This is Josh with Peterson Electric to try to do one good video for you a week. Um, this one is going to be right around the first week of May of 2019. Um, or 2020, excuse me. If you remember, this is going to be the eighth week of COVID. You'll remember this video. For my SEO guy, this is going to be about basements. Um, I had a gentleman call me up uh, last week. I'll give you a quick example. Um, here, here's an unfinished basement we're wiring today. Okay, this is it. There's a storage area over there. There's a hallway here. There's a little kitchenette here, like a bar. Okay, little kids' nook cove area. There's gonna be a little TV down there. Okay, and then over in here is gonna be the living room, which is they're using it for exercise, right? And then in here is going to be just a small bedroom so they could sell it. It's not big. It's like 10 by 10, 100 square foot. And then right in there is the little uh, closet. And then in here is a nice walk-in shower. You got your water closet. And your water valve, they had to have an access door. And then a walk-in shower right here. And then a heat fan light combo kit. So anyways, customer called me up and said, hey, I'd like to run power to my basement. Can you just do the sub panel? I'm doing all the wiring. And I said, okay, tell me a little bit more about it. Yeah, we're somewhere in Northern Colorado. Um, I basically need 100 or 125 amps for you to uh, power the basement. I said, how big is the basement? Like under a thousand square foot? Yeah, okay. And then I was trying to get to the points of, are you doing a lot of different items? Okay, so a basement this size right here is honestly, by the time you look at all the square footage and the kitchen area taken out, it might be about 600 square foot, not much at all. Um, you have to keep in mind that, well, first of all, he was trying to tell me, you know, he's figured out his, that he needs that amount of power. And I questioned and said, well, why do you need that kind of power? Um, he got kind of weird about it. And I'm like, okay. And so... I just basically said, well, you know, we've been wiring in the trade for since I was an apprentice 22 years ago. So we're just trying to evaluate the situation of what you have. Um, but I mean, if you have like a ton of electric base heat down here, then yeah, I could see possibly needing 100 amp. And if you have a hot tub out back that you're going to daisy chain, yeah, I could see needing 100 amp, 125. Eh, not usually on something like that. Um but, you know, he wanted us just to run the sub panel and then him go ahead and do all the electrical work down there. And we kind of shy away from that, just so you know, if you're looking at my video. We have over the years said, yeah, we're not really interested in setting a sub panel. What's a sub panel? This is a sub panel right here. This is called a 1224. It's a Siemens. Okay. I've gone through here and figured out all my load calcs. And basically gone through all of this right here to figure out what circuitry I need. And then kind of went through the load calc on myself. And I actually am a little high on this because my cove heaters are a lot less than I thought I found out today. But the bottom line is that that should be quite equivalent for electrical here. So you have to keep in mind that there is consensual and non-consensual loads. And that's going to be based upon AC for the summer or heat for the winter. In this case down here, they only have a couple ceiling fans. And that's part of the lighting load that's pretty typical. But when you look at the heat side of it, this place could be more of an issue in the winter. Okay. They are putting in three cove heaters up high. We got them right here for the window. They're 240 volt rated. And they go down to a thermostat. And that's that one. And then out of this room, has two cove heaters up here. And they go to a thermostat as well. Okay. So my point is, is that, look, if you don't really understand anything... Hold on a second. Just don't want your finger in the way of the video. If you don't any, understand much about the load calc of it, you probably should not be wiring it. Right? And I know that's a pretty firm statement. But a lot of people like, you know, I'm calling up and it's just a couple circuits and it's just a couple of this and just just moving two walls, just this. And I'm like, where does the word just become into the point of our trade of cheap and now? And really, I want to know a lot, but I really don't. So it's just this. It's just that. My point to him was, look, we cannot just run your sub panel over here and then let you run all the circuits. 
Now, why would I say that? Okay, look, the minute I decide to install this breaker for him and cut in his wire and put in a sub panel, I am now responsible for energizing all of his electrical. If he doesn't have a permit, we're not even going to talk to him. Because in basements, we don't want that coming back on us when he comes to sell. I'm talking finishing a basement like this with drywall, insulation, square footage that counts when you sell. Egressible window, closet, in a bedroom with a smoke. Looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. It doesn't have to have a bathroom adjoined to it, right? Jack and Jill doesn't. But if those things are there, then it's a bedroom. My point to him was that, well, who's going to warranty it, Right? And I says, look, have you wired anything in the past? He got pretty upset about it. I'm like, well, it's a flat out good question. You're asking me to come over and put in a sub panel and energize your work after you're done. And I don't even know if you put enough circuits in there. And when he does pull a homeowner's permit, he's supposed to tell them that I did the sub panel. So for our insurance purposes, we won't. We have to actually bring down that sub panel ourselves and wire the whole basement. If it starts and stops and you're not going to finish the basement, but you're going to put in a couple circuits here and there for conduit coming down the wall just so you can run on your exercise equipment, then that's not considered a full basement, right? That's just going to be a couple circuits that you need. But for us to run a couple circuits and then they want to come in behind us and rope the whole thing and not tell us, that we have to know up front as well. Again, there's insurance reasons for that protection for the customer as well as us. And as I, as I gently said to him, look, if there's an electrical issue or fire, it ain't going to be on us. It's going to be on you. You've wired one basement before. We've wired 22 years of work. I don't really understand. I know I've trained a few guys in the field and gals, and we are um, a smaller shop. But in my 15 years on my own hiring people and firing a few people, you know real quick if people have any bit of skill to do this trade. Not all trades are the same. I like to paint it like this, as my mechanic said. For me, Joshua, I've changed out a 1989 Honda Accord engine and an 87 worked on water pumps and an Acura worked on all of the suspension. And that was like a 1980-91. So I've done a lot of work on older cars in the 80s and early 90s. But when it came to actually understanding more about the mechanical industry and how that's changed in the last 20 years for cars and diesel trucks, it doesn't make me that I should be the one that wants to take that risk to go out there and work on my daughter's car and everything or my wife's, right? Sometimes you just hire a professional to do the work and you bite the bullet a little bit. But the point of the matter of this video is that, you know, will we just come down and put in a sub panel so you can do all your work and save yourself a bunch of money? Look, if you grew up in the trade and you are um, an RW or a journeyman and you're presently licensed, then I totally respect that. But then again, you would be doing your own subpanel, right? My point is, is that a lot of people think on that load calc, they just want to oversize to protect themselves. That's not how you figure out your load, okay? 220.42 talks about load, 210.20. Uh, there's many chapters when you're putting in equipment. I'm going to do another video based upon how this load was figured out because this video is getting a little long. So you'll have to look for the green shirt, okay? And you'll have to be attentive to that on the date but basically in a nutshell yeah we're pulling 60 amps down here in fact after figuring out that my co heaters don't draw that much i would probably pull 50 amps but the point of the matter is figuring out that load is very important but if you do it wrong you own it you're in drywall you can't fix it okay so keep that in mind but you got to know ahead of time what the customer's doing anyways thanks for joining us guys have a good day